In this video, we'll look at one complete example of how to use our sorting hat technique to assess whether an infinite series of real numbers is convergent or divergent. We're going to work on this example, the summation of negative 1 to the n times n squared plus n all over the quantity 2n factorial. Is this series convergent absolutely, convergent conditionally, or divergent? In our sorting hat, the first test we usually do is the terms test. Does the sequence of terms of this series approach zero? If it does not, we can immediately say that this series diverges. So we'll test the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence of terms. Unfortunately, this is not quite so easy because of the factorial in the denominator. So let's make our life a little easier by beginning by ignoring the negative 1 to the n in the numerator. That's OK at this stage. Because whether or not the sequence of terms approaches zero does not depend on whether the signs oscillate or whether the signs do not oscillate. So let's get rid of the negative 1 to the n in answering this question and figure out what is the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus n over the quantity 2n factorial. We'll make our first use of the order thermometer, engaging which between the numerator and the denominator approaches its limit more quickly at a higher order. So here both the numerator and the denominator n squared plus n and 2n factorial are approaching infinity. But the denominator, being a factor of factorial speed, is reaching its limit more quickly at a higher order than the numerator is. So the conclusion we can make here, the 2n quantity factorial, is getting to infinity, quote unquote, before the n squared plus n is. So this limit is a limit of the form infinity downstairs, 1 upstairs, which is just one of our names for 0. So we conclude that, yes, the terms of this sequence approach zero according to our order thermometer heuristic. So that means we've answered the terms test in the affirmative. The sequence of terms of this series approaches zero. That's not a conclusive test by any means, but it at least tells us that we have more work to do. So what's our next test? Our next test is the alternating series test. Are the terms of this series oscillating in sign between positive and negative? If the answer is yes, then we can at least conclude that this series converges conditionally. And maybe even better, maybe it converges absolutely. To answer the question, let's just look at the formula for our sequence of terms and notice that it has a factor of negative 1 to the power n in it, which oscillates sign, and that all the other factors are positive. Therefore, yes, our series is oscillating in sign and has therefore passed the alternating series test. But because our series has passed the alternating series test, we at least know for sure that it converges conditionally. Because the series alternates and its terms approach zero, the alternating series test guarantees convergence at least conditionally. The next question we then need to answer is how do we know whether this series converges conditionally only or if it converges absolutely? To answer that question, we need to throw away the oscillating signs by taking the absolute value of the terms. When we take the absolute value of the terms, that negative 1 to the n factor becomes 1 to the n, which is equal to 1, and so it vanishes. So now the rest of our time is going to be spent assessing whether this series of positive terms converges or diverges. Because if this series of positive terms still converges, then the original will have converged absolutely. Whereas if this series now diverges, then the original series converged only conditionally. Let's figure out which one it is by continuing our trail down the sorting hat. Our next stop in the sorting hat is to decide whether or not we can compare this series to another series whose convergence we know. If we can conclude that this series, term by term or asymptotically, is bigger than a divergent series, then definitely it will diverge. And conversely, if we can conclude that it's smaller or higher in order than a convergent series, then we can conclude that this series is convergent. So let's ask whether we can compare this to something that's convenient. And if we can't do it, or if we can't do it conveniently, we might just skip this test. Let's make second use of our order thermometer. What we're going to do is take our sequence, n squared plus n, over the quantity 2n factorial, and in its numerator and its denominator, pick the highest order term or factor. So upstairs I'll pick the n squared over the n, and downstairs I'll pick the 2n quantity factorial. So our goal would be to compare our sequence 
to the sequence that's simpler, n squared over 2n quantity factorial. Well, where do these belong on the order thermometer? Both of these sequences are approaching zero, so which of the sequences is approaching zero at a higher order? The problem with the use of the comparison test here is that even our simpler series, n squared over the quantity 2n factorial, it's not clear where that belongs on the order thermometer. We might have the hunch that it looks like a factorial speed series, but trying to make that limit comparison is going to turn us in some circles. Remember, you always have the option, if you can get away with it, of skipping the comparison test. So unless the comparison that you're making is really convenient, feel free to gloss over the comparison test and move on to the next test in the sorting hat, which tends to be conclusive quite a bit of the time, and that's the ratio test. In the ratio test, we ask whether this series is pretty much geometric as n tends toward infinity. And if we can compute the asymptotic ratio of this series, we can conclude whether or not it converges based on the value of that ratio. And probably, we could have skipped straight ahead to this ratio test right away for the following reason. Taking a look at the two kinds of factors we have in the numerator and the denominator, we've got a polynomial factor upstairs. And polynomial series tend to have asymptotic ratios of 1. But downstairs, we have a factorial. And factorials tend to have asymptotic ratios of 0. So that means if the factorial is really dictating the behavior of this series, the ratio test should give us a really conclusive result and we predict that when we do the work, that the asymptotic ratio of this series is going to be equal to zero. And if that's the case, then because the asymptotic ratio is less than one, we will get convergence via the ratio test. So our prediction now is if we subject this series to the ratio test, we should find an asymptotic ratio of zero and be able to conclude that this series of positive terms converges. So let's find out. To compute that asymptotic ratio, we need to divide the n plus first term of our series, which we can get by replacing n by n plus 1 carefully in the formula, so n plus 1 the quantity squared plus the quantity n plus 1, all divided by, careful now, twice the quantity n plus 1, the quantity factorial. So there's the n plus first term, and then downstairs we have the nth term. Dividing the n plus first term by the nth term gives us the ratio which we're then going to take the limit of that as n goes to infinity. Before we can determine this limit, let's simplify. First by taking the compound fraction and making it a simple fraction. And when I do that, I'm going to group those factors that are like one another next to one another. So I've got the ratio of the two factorial pieces, 2n factorial, divided by twice the quantity n plus 1, the quantity factorial. And then I have n plus 1 quantity squared plus n plus 1 divided by n squared plus n. And what I want, again, is the asymptotic ratio, i.e. the value of this ratio, as n tends to infinity. But first, I'm going to take that 2 times the quantity n plus 1 that we had in the factorial downstairs and distribute the 2. This is another step that's very easy to screw up, so watch it one more time. Twice the quantity n plus 1, distributing the 2, becomes 2n plus 2. Now we're ready to ask the question, well, what happens to this as n goes to infinity? Well, starting with our polynomial quotient over here, I've got upstairs in the numerator a polynomial of degree 2, n plus 1 the quantity squared plus n plus 1, and downstairs I have also a polynomial of degree 2. Now, according to tenets of precalculus, or according to L'Hopital's rule, whichever one you prefer to use, whenever we divide two polynomials of the same order, the limit as n goes to infinity is equal to the ratio of the leading terms. In other words, as n goes to infinity, the numerator is basically going to look like n squared, and the denominator is basically going to look like its highest order term, n squared. But the ratio of those two terms is 1 over 1. And so this factor, this fraction, is going to contribute a factor of 1 to my asymptotic ratio. So multiplying by 1 is invisible, so let's get rid of this and just imagine that there's a times 1 right there. Now to simplify the factorials, and I always write it out so that I don't screw it up. Upstairs, the quantity 2n factorial is the product of 2n, and 2n minus 1, and 2n minus 2, and every smaller uh, natural number down to 3, 2, 1. Downstairs, 2n plus 2, the quantity factorial, begins with 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1, and then 2n, 2n minus 1, and so on, all the way down to 3, 2, and 1 also. And whenever you simplify factorials, there's a bloodbath of cancellation that happens.
Namely, every single factor in the numerator has a matching factor in the denominator. And so when everything is canceled, the only factors that are left over are the 2n plus 2 and the 2n plus 1 in the denominator. The numerator, everything is canceled, becoming 1. So when I take the limit as n approaches infinity, this limit has the form 1 over infinity, which is one of our names for 0. Therefore, the asymptotic ratio of this series is equal to 0, and that's great news because that means that our ratio test conclusively shows, because that ratio is between 0 and 1, exclusive of 1, because our ratio is less than 1, in other words, the ratio test guarantees that our series converges. Therefore, this series of positive terms converges. And that means that the original series that had the alternating minus 1 to the n in it converges absolutely. So just a quick recap, but before we recap, one more comment. The very last test, the one that we didn't even bother to try in this example, is the integral test. It's at the bottom of the sorting hat because usually it's the most complicated one to use because finding antiderivatives is a messy business. So we didn't use the integral test here, but that's okay because we had a conclusive result by the time we got to the ratio test. To recap, what we did was we first looked at the original series and applied the terms test. Does the sequence of its terms approach zero? And the answer was yes. Which means let's keep going because we can't rule out the fact that it's divergent. Then the alternating series test told us that because the signs of the terms were alternating, the series is at least conditionally convergent, and it might be absolutely convergent, but it's definitely not divergent because it's an alternating series whose terms go to zero. Then to continue, we took the absolute value of the terms and asked, is there a comparison that we can make between this positive term series and a nicer positive term series? And we decided to take a pass on that one, that there wasn't really a known series that we could compare it to that was convenient. So we went right for the jugular and the ratio test. And by computing the asymptotic ratio to be rho equals zero, because that ratio is less than one, this series of positive terms converges, and because this series of positive terms converges, that means that our original alternating series converges absolutely.